For those of you just starting out, I'll quickly recap the diffuse, opacity, and bump map channels. These are part of your material, and while there are many other channels, depending on if you're going with traditional or PBR, uh, they're the subject of a more advanced tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, we'll only cover the diffuse map, the opacity map, and the bump map. The diffuse map is where you put the appearance of your material. So if you've got uh, leather, this would uh, appear like leather. If you had um, metallic, it would, uh, it would look like metal. If you want cloth, you would make it look like cloth. Uh, this channel also uh, dictates the base color. While it is possible to add um, light effects or uh, shades of uh, light to um, the diffuse channel, this is what the starting color will be. The opacity channel allows you to create cutouts or semi-transparent uh, portions of your object of clothing. Uh, so in this particular case, we can see we have a cutout uh, across the breasts, and then we have a semi-transparent uh, belt or stripe here. Where an opacity uh, file is white, you will get a full opaqueness of whatever diffuse texture you've selected. Um, wherever the opacity file is black, such as our cutout, uh, will be fully transparent. Any shades of gray in between will uh, produce a semi-transparent uh, diffuse uh, portion. If we uh, look at our opacity map and we play with the brightness level, we can see that now as our uh, gray gets lighter and lighter, it's becoming less and less transparent and eventually even our cutout, which was black, is now turning gray, so you can start to see that it turns more, uh, more opaque until white would be completely transparent, and if we went in the other extreme, you, we would see that now we're getting the whole uh, outfit now is starting to turn uh, transparent until the extreme would always uh, be completely transparent material. The bump map channel allows you to make slight alterations to your diffuse channel to make it look like it's a little bit, uh, portions are a little bit raised or a little uh, bit uh, pushed in without actually having to modify the mesh. So if we look at our character here, um, we can see that on the pants, there is a pocket here. That pocket is actually not uh, a mesh uh, item. It is actually a bump map. So if we look at our uh, pants here, we can see that we have a bump map. In the bump map, uh, if you are using a grayscale one, anything that is black is the most um, pushed back. And the opposite extreme, anything that is white is the most pushed out. And again, shades of gray in between uh, cause uh, variations in what appears to be pushed in or pushed out. So you can see here we've created a pocket with the uh, lip of the pocket being uh, lighter than the rest of the pocket and that being lighter than the rest of the background. So it makes it look like the pocket is standing out even though it actually isn't. If we actually rotate the character carefully we can see that there is actually no raised element it's all being done by the bump map. Um, it is also common to use bump map with a texture, such as with this, um, this leather. You might want to have a corresponding bump map so that the leather features look like they've got a little bit of crinkles and, and uh, uh, nooks and crannies as opposed to being uh, flat. So that's the three uh, most important uh, channels, your diffuse channel, uh, what your uh, material will look like. Opacity allows you to do cutouts or semi-transparent portions and the bump map allows you to, to raise or push in parts of your uh, map without actually altering the mesh. This tutorial 
is a tutorial which teaches you how to use opacity maps and custom texture files to make unique clothing from the Lord Ashes clothing bases. Here we have the turtleneck sweater and we're going to try to make this a little bit more special by adding custom textures and opacity maps. In order to do this, we need to find out the UV layout of the piece of clothing. To do this, we select the piece of clothing. This could be either in Character Creator or in iClone. We go to the Materials tab. We ensure that the Diffuse uh, has a selection for any kind of image. At this point, this is not really important, but some image needs to be selected in order for this button, the UV reference button, to work. So here we have just a basic cloth uh, uh, image selected, but again, it could be anything. And now we can press the UV reference button and open up the UV mapping. So this is basically taken the piece of clothing and kind of unwrapped it, making everything flat. In some cases, the UV layout will be quite obvious. Here we can see some kind of a cir circular topology, probably the breasts. Uh, we can see a cutout here, uh, which is probably the, uh, the arms. Uh, we can see this wrapping around, so this probably is the <clears throat> Uh, the back over here and over here and we probably have a seam on the back and down here uh, we most likely have the arms for the sweater um, so in this case if we want to apply for example a custom logo on the chest we can do that fairly easily again because of the topology here this appears to be the breast area so if in this area of our texture map um, we put a logo that would cause that logo to appear in the appropriate place on the clothing. Uh, now the way that we can do that fairly easily is by using layers in your favorite uh, uh, image editing software. So I'm going to take this as one layer. I'm going to add a second layer where we can actually put our uh, our texture, whatever uh, material we would like. I'm just going to go with uh, just a green color to illustrate the concept. I can now move uh, this reference layout to a top layer. And if I make it somewhat transparent, I can now see my actual texture and I can see the UV reference. So now I could, if I wanted to, uh, across the chest here, uh, if I wanted to say, write a logo name, I could, oh, oops. I can add that to the texture layer and the UV reference will help me position it correctly. So again, if I'm doing it on the front of the chest, if I want it slightly above the breasts, I could do something like that. And now I can just delete the UV re reference and I'm going to be uh, left with a texture map that has my logo or whatever it is that you wanted in the right location. Uh, the same would apply for opacity maps. If we were working with this, and let's say we wanted to make it a uh, cutout around the breast area. We can do the same thing. Uh, instead of having a texture file, we would make a, uh, a file that is black and white or grayscale. Um, if we make the background white, now currently we're not seeing it white because we still have our uh, UV reference on top. If I this, uh, if I uh, turn that off for a moment, we can see that it's now all white. And anything in a opacity map that is purely white will be completely solid. Anything that is purely black will be completely cut out or transparent. And any shades in, in between will be partially transparent. So if I wanted to, to make a cutout 
again, we can just take our, uh, we can take that, uh, uh, draw, a area of black. I should have got rid of, rid of my hello in the first place. Okay, um, and now same thing. We have it uh, because of UV, UV references, we can see where to place it, um, but then eventually we just get rid of the UV references and we're left with a opacity map that is going to cause a cut out there. Now, in this particular case, the UV reference was fairly self-explanatory. Again, because of the circular uh, nature of the topology, uh, we figured out that this is most likely the rest area. This is probably going to be then the waist and coming into the back for a seam on the back. And because this doesn't seem to have any long sleeves, most likely these sections here are the long sleeves. Now, how good the UV layout uh, really depends on the creator of the uh, piece of clothing or object. In some cases, it can be very uh, self-explanatory so that with very little guessing, you can position uh, your <clears throat> elements in the right place. But in other cases, it can be quite um, non-intuitive. This is especially the case if a uh, automated uh, process was used like in Blender the automated uh, UV unwrapping. In some cases, uh, the UV uh, mapping is not very intuitive. And then we need to use secondary methods to determine what part uh, corresponds to what part in the clothing. One solution to determine the UV topology of clothing where the UV uh, references are not intuitive is to create a grid-like texture such as this. As you can see, I've divided my texture into many uh, little uh, squares, and each one of them has a unique identification. I can then apply this texture to the clothing, which is going to make it look very odd, but it will help me locate the different parts of the clothing within the texture. So here I'm going to take our uh, turtleneck sweater. I am going to apply Okay, so we can see that obviously this is not something we want to end up with, but now we have unique identification of which parts on the clothing correspond to what parts in our texture. So for example, let's say we wanted to put a logo on the back and we weren't quite sure where the back is in the image file. Well, here we can see that we've got a 34, 54, 74, looks like most likely 94, and we've got a 27, 47, 67, 87. So by going back now, I can locate those in here, and that will tell me what where that exists in this layout. Now we can combine the previous um, UV references with this map, and that will then tell us even further what parts we need to work on in order to create a custom texture or a custom opacity map. So similarly, if I wanted to, let's say, shorten the, the sleeves, I can see here that we've got V8, T8, R8, and looks like maybe V, VT and R9. 
So again, I could go now back into my image file, locate those, uh, put those uh, black instead of white on the opacity map, and that would then cut those out. So as an e easy example here, we can see that um, the chest area here seems to uh, be comprised of 50-51, 70-71. So if I go back into my texture file, uh, sorry, texture layout, uh, what did we say that was? 50, 51-70-71. 50-51-70-71. 50-51-70-71. 50-51-70-71. So this area is representing the, the, the chest. So now, again, if I wanted to do a cutout, I could do something like this. I'm now working on it on a different layer so that I, I can get rid of the the grid very easily afterwards. Okay, if I get rid of my grid, fill in everything. There. So now when I go back to here, if I would now apply that as an opacity, we can see we've successfully cut out that part of the uh, the sweater dress. So that's how we can use uh, a odd looking uh, texture, which uniquely identifies uh, various parts of the texture file to try to figure out where it is on the actual piece of clothing um, when the UV references are not intuitive. Obviously, once you are done using the um, grid texture, you're going to want to replace that back with uh, your original uh, desirable texture. <clears throat> and, uh, and you're done.